Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And today we have a special guest. I'm joined by Missy Franklin. How you doing? I'm so good, Ferris. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you. Uh, so let's just get right into it. What what has been your time in 2020? Uh, how how's your how's your year going? You know, it. I feel like it's more important than ever to keep things in perspective. And as hard as this year has been, I know that a lot of people are going through a lot worse than what we are. So I am doing just fine. Um, my husband and I moved back to Colorado at the end of last year, right after getting married. And, and so honestly, we kind of got everything in like right in the nick of time. So we're so happy to have been here for the whole year. Um, and we've been safe and healthy, knock on wood, and just lying low and trying to do as much work from home as possible. Um, so it's it's honestly been good. We miss seeing our friends and family and it's hard being away from people that you love. But other than that, we, we're doing just fine. <laughs> totally, keep things in perspective. That's so important. Uh, so for everyone who's watching, who maybe for like the three people who don't know who you are, you know, two-time Olympian, five-time Olympic gold medalist, a ton of accolades, uh, too long to list. What, what was uh, you know, some of the highlights from your professional swimming career? Oh, well, just to start off, I, I'm pretty sure it's more than three people that don't know. Um, <laughs> I would not expect that. But I think for me, obviously, the London Olympic Games were like such a dream come true. I mean, to be 17 years old and to go to your first Olympics and walk away with four golds and a bronze was was such a surreal experience. And it was just incredible. Every single day felt like I needed to pinch myself. I couldn't believe what was happening. Sometimes I still feel like I need to pinch myself. I can't believe that that was my life. And those are the experiences that I got to live out. So that was huge. But I think it's it's really about the journey. It's not about the destination. So even those big moments were so incredible and so amazing. There are so many moments along the way that really define my career. Just the quiet moments with teammates and coaches and friends and swimming in high school and swimming on a club team and swimming in college. I mean, all of that, you know, accumulated into the career that I had. So as much as I cherish those big kind of center stage moments, there's so many kind of quieter background moments that I think were almost equally as important. Yeah, totally. And I think a lot of people forget that, especially when they see, oh my God, Missy Franklin, it's like they see you on TV or, or on some social media posts. And, you know, she's a swimmer like everyone else. She swam in college, you know, good club swimming. Maybe some of those like behind the scenes moments or were there any highlights or anything that stood out that wasn't like being on the podium? Okay, well, this is so absurd, but literally one of my all time favorite memories was I think every swimmer cherishes, cherishes the normally Sunday evening after either a three day long swim me, a five day long swim me, a seven day long swim me, however long they are. It's just that last night where the swim meet's done and you just kind of get to celebrate. And so my favorite memory of that was I was with four of my girlfriends and we were celebrating the end of junior nationals. And we would always go, it was in federal way, and we would always go to Red Robin and get clucks and fries as like our celebration meal. And I just remember driving home from that and we were in the parking lot and we were blasting music in the minivan. And before we pulled out, two guys in front of us just walking by just started like break dancing on the side of the street. And one of them started doing like backflips. And for whatever reason, like that moment to me, there was just like so much joy and sharing that moment with my teammates after having such a successful few days together, like those are the moments and those are the relationships and the friendships that you carry so long past the end of your career. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I don't think for any of my three day meets or whatever, I had people doing backflips on the sidewalk in front of the restaurant. <laughs> that sounds pretty, pretty cool. Rare. It was amazing. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, one of the things we, we talked about just in the very beginning, perspective and, and the importance of that. So, you know, when you're going through the, the journey uh, and whether it's someone makes it to the Olympic Games or, or not, there's ups and downs. There's, there's hills, there's, there's valleys. You know, what did you learn from some of those ups and downs that you've experienced in your professional career? Well, it's such a good question. I think most importantly that we learn more from our failures and from our disappointments than we do from our successes. And I think that people sometimes have a hard time grasping that because we sort of have this innate fear of failure. We consider failure to be a bad thing. And 
I don't consider it a bad thing. I consider it something that we are all going to do at some point in our life, in our career, in our relationships. Like we're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're, we're going to end up disappointed. We're going to look back and, you know, wish we had done something different or wish we had made a better decision. And in truth, it's those moments that make us into the people that we're meant to become, because those are the moments where we learn so much. Having success is great and it's amazing and it's so incredible and so worthwhile. But if you ask any elite swimmer, if they learned more from their best race or their worst race, I guarantee you every single one of them are gonna say, we learn more from the worst race. And it just gives you that motivation and that encouragement to keep pushing forward, to figure out, okay, where do I go from here? How do I grow? How do I learn? How do I not let this happen again? You know, how do I, how do I keep from making this happen twice? And so I think it's so important when you're going through a hard time like that, when you're going through a down to keep that in perspective and realize that even though it's not fun and as hard as it is in the moment, the reason you're having this down is so that you can go up higher than you've ever been before. But you really have to choose to look at it that way and choose to make it proactive and really get something out of that time. That's awesome. Very deep. I think, <laughs> I'm I think, a deep one. Very <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think everyone listening will, will gain something out of that. And so in the last you know, two or so years since you've been out of the competitive world. I know you're not just hanging out on the couch. I know you've been very, very busy. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. Just Chilling. On the couch. <laughs> Chilling. So what, what have you been up to lately? Because I know you're involved in a lot of different things. I am. I'm involved in so much. Oh my gosh. Well, this year especially, it's just been so crazy working from home. I think the most important thing to me and kind of the basis of my platform has been to inspire. Like that has been the goal of my life essentially is how do I inspire others? And so this year presented a really unique challenge in how do I inspire others from sitting at home on my couch? You know, <laughs> Like how do I keep doing this? And so since I retired, I think really mainly my big focus has been philanthropy. Um, I'm working with incredible Incredible organizations. I'm on the board for um, an incredible nonprofit called UWA, and they're based out of India. And they use a football or soccer program to keep young girls there out of childhood marriage. So doing a ton of work with them has been absolutely incredible. I met them through Laureus, which is the organization I'm also an academy member on. And then doing a lot of work with Children's Hospital back here, and they're building a new pediatric mental health institute. So fundraising for that. Still working with all the companies that supported me um, when I was swimming, but now as more of an ambassador. And then most recently, I'm so excited. I just announced the launch of my new course. So starting in January, I'm doing a 10 session series called Relentless Spirit. And each session is going to be related to something that I think is going to help make whoever is taking this with me, not only a better swimmer, but a better person as well. So we're going to be talking about goal setting and nutrition and overcoming failure and backstroke technique and freestyle technique and positivity and so many different things in these 10 sessions. And they're going to happen every couple days in January and they're going to be live, which is going to be so fun because it'll be really interactive, really personal. And I'll be actually able to answer the questions that the people who are enrolled have and talk to them and really kind of have that time with them over the course of January. So that's my most recent endeavor um, that I'm so excited about. I can't wait to get to know everyone that signed up for it. That's awesome. And I'm really happy you brought that up. Because, uh, you, you mentioned a few things there. We're going we're gonna to dive into it. But for anyone who's interested in learning more and signing up, we're going to make sure it is linked in the description below. So make sure you guys check it out. Um, one of the things that you mentioned is that they're taking the course with you. And then you mentioned the live session. So like, what, what is that going to be like? Yeah, so I'm just so excited. So like I said, the sessions are going to be live. So they're 30 minute sessions. Um, and I'm going to talk for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, on that specific topic for that session. And then the rest of the time is going to be open to Q&A. So we can really get in personal with if you have a specific question about nutrition, about goal setting, about confidence, I'm going to give you my honest answer. And we're really going to get into that. If you can't make the session live, you can still access the recorded version. So there's no worry there. And then my goal is I'm going to try and create as many kind of documents um, as possible to go with each session so that people will actually have physical takeaways with them to keep working on even long after the course is done. Because I don't want this to just be, okay, 30 minutes of goal setting, you think about it once and never touch it again. This is about building blocks. This is about foundation. How do I set you up to continue working on these things for the rest of your career? Because if you do, I truly believe it's going to help you become a better athlete. 
Awesome. So, so let me get this straight. You, if you sign up for this, you're going to get like 30 minute live sessions with, with you in a group setting at, yeah. at a somewhat regular base. So how long is this January to when, when is yeah, this running? So I believe it's January 13th to the 26th. If that's right, it's sometime in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be every couple of days. Um, and we're going to be doing it at around 5 30 PM mountain standard time. We haven't nailed down a date yet. But like I said, if you can't ever make a session live, you'll still have access to the recordings for up to 24 hours. So you'll be able to go and watch. But every single session is going to be live, which is going to be so much fun. Um, and it's going to be 10 whole sessions and a big virtual graduation celebration at the end. And I'm so excited for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited for you and everyone who signs up. So we'll make sure it's linked below. So it's like, who should be taking this? Who do you think would really find the most value out of enrolling? So honestly, I'm trying to make it as applicable as I possibly can for everyone. Um, I'm really trying to make this open to all ages, to all genders. Obviously, swimmers are probably going to benefit the most from it. Um, but I think it's going to be great for young girls, young boys, for you know, young women about to go into college, young men about to go into college. Maybe if you're tran questioning, transitioning out of your swimming career, what does that look like? I think even as young as 11 and 12 would be great. Just setting these foundations that they can have for a long time. And by the sessions being live and having that ability to answer questions, I think that's another thing that's going to make it really applicable to a lot of different people is hopefully I'm going to be able to get to as many of those one-on-one -on -one questions as I possibly can. So I really want it to be open for as many as possible, but I think it would be incredible for anyone not looking just to become a better swimmer, but looking at how we use the tools that swimming teaches us to also become better people outside of the water as well. That's awesome. I love it. So give us like a little nugget. We don't want to spoil the fun. So just give us like a little taste of what, you know, and, and maybe I'll give the context. So, you know, 2020 has been a challenging year for a lot of people. So, you know, what advice do you have? And maybe you can tie in one of the sessions or something that's, that's applicable, you know, just give us like a taste of, you know, what, what's Missy Franklin's advice for a swimmer who's, you know, going through 2020. Okay. This has been a really difficult year. I don't know what's coming up. A lot of uncertainty. What would you say to, to that swimmer? So I think a big thing, and this is, we're going to focus an entire session on this is confidence. And I think a lot of us have taken huge confidence hits this year, especially when it comes to sport, because we haven't been swimming, we haven't been racing. And so if you've been out of the water for a while, if you're coming up on a big meet, or you don't even know when your next meet is going to be, how do you go into that with confidence, knowing that your training has been different, knowing that you haven't had the pool time that you're used to. And so we're going to kind of focus a whole session on how do you build confidence? What is confidence? Why is it important to have it? And addressing a lot of the doubts that we all face right before we get up on a block, you know, and how do you face those thoughts and overcome them, you know, and kind of be the person in that situation that doesn't fear nerves, but looks forward to them because you are in control. And, and so I think that applies again, so far outside of the swimming realm, you know, in so many different areas in life. But I think that's huge for a lot of athletes this year that just feel like they're not either where they left off before the pandemic started um, and feel like they have a long way to go. I think that confidence is really important in keeping that journey, not only fun, um, but it gives you encouragement along the way, knowing that you're making that progress and you're proud of yourself for that progress. Awesome. So be confident. And if you want to learn how to be confident like Missy Franklin, you can sign up at the description in the link uh, below. So moving forward beyond your course in 2021, we're heading into an Olympic year. And I was just curious, you know, your thoughts on sort of the state of swimming and where you see like Team USA going from here. You know, I think you were a part of a, a really interesting generation. You know, people would put you with Michael Phelps and, and other, you know, top studs. And now we've got like the next generation already. Like, what do you think of where the sport is going? I mean, I never have a doubt about where the sport is going. We are USA Swimming and we are a part of a living legacy, which is, which is so incredible. And it's such an honor. There have been so many that have come before us that we stand on the shoulders of. And now, you know, those of us that are retired, hopefully we become the shoulders that this new generation comes and 
it's just the most beautiful cycle um, to be a part of something that has such an incredible history is is so powerful we have the most amazing talent in the whole world and the most amazing people which i think is even better i think we have so many amazing races to look forward to in 2021 and i have no doubt that team usa is going to be exactly where they want to be come next summer Totally, totally. Is, is there any, to be more specific, any specific athletes you see? I remember if we rewind, when you broke the world record in the 200 backstroke, um, I was like, oh my gosh, you just killed everyone. Like this record's going to stay for like 20 years. And like, it, it, it just went down. <laughs> yeah. So like, are there any specific, um, maybe, maybe just nostalgia, like any events like 100 back or 200 back or what, what events uh, would you look at and be like, wow, this event's gotten really fast. I mean, well, you just said it. I mean, Regan Smith going a 57 and a 203 and a 100 and 200 backstroke is absolute madness. Like, I can't even fathom that. I can't wrap my mind around it. So I can't wait to watch Regan swim. And of course, those are my events. So I just feel so connected to them. And I love not only racing them, but watching people race them. So I cannot wait to see her and what she's capable of. So many others too. I think Nathan Adrian particularly has been through so much in the past two years and for him overcoming what he's done and to be going back and to have such a longevity in the sport as a male sprinter mm. is truly unbelievable. So I'm so excited to watch him to see what he does. I mean, there's just so many stories, so many people. I, I can't wait. I get so excited. <laughs> nice. And you mentioned Nathan Adrian, fellow Cal Bear. I mean, the Cal yeah. squad specifically has got some superstars yeah. on both sides, men and women. Uh, yeah. Very, very cool. So we're going to wrap things up here uh, with a game of this or that. Love it. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Here we go. iPhone or Android? iPhone. 200 back or 100 back? 200 back. Cat or dog? dog but i do love cats <laughs> we can see some furry friends on your instagram <laughs> <laughs> speaking of social media instagram or tiktok oh instagram i don't even have a tiktok i can't that's too much to handle. we gotta get you maybe after this i'll convince <laughs> you to get a tiktok uh football or basketball football okay car or truck truck all right all right movie or a book oh oh uh book all right. How about international travel or domestic travel? Oh, probably domestic because it means we're probably going to see family or friends. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Mm. Okay. Final question. The ocean or the mountains? Oh, mountains for sure. And speaking of which, you want to see a party's mountains? Hey, there we go. We have a guest appearance. <laughs> well, hello. Thank you, you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> hi buddy <laughs> oh that's awesome i love it well He's missy thank you mountains too <laughs> i figure i mean you're in colorado right so i i, I figured that oh, was yeah. a gimme that was a gimme right there <laughs> uh sweet missy thank you so much for being a guest on the ask a swim pro show we'll make sure everything we discuss is linked in the description down below we wish you the very best in 2021 and beyond thank you so much i so appreciate being here <laughs>